Hello everyone. I welcome all of you once again in this new lecture of this series of video lecture on organic chemistry for ITJ. From the last three lectures we have been studying resonance. We have studied how to draw resonating structures. We have studied how to draw resonance hybrid. We have studied why we study resonating structures. We have seen how resonance brings about stability. Resonance spreads up the charge in the molecule. Resonating, resonating structures are hypothetical, but still we use them in the reaction because it is the structure, the kind of a structure we are acquainted to. And resonance hybrid gives us the real distribution of electronic wave in a molecule. In the last problem of the last lecture, we have seen, uh, we, have, we talked about the basicity, we talked about the basic site, we talked about amide, and in that amide, we talked about which site is the donor? Oxygen or nitrogen? There we have seen that this lone pair of nitrogen does not remain in the orbital of nitrogen. Rather, it goes for resonance and it gets accumulated on oxygen. So, this, this, this phenomena, this phenomena is called resonance and resonance changes the electronic distribution and resonance hybrid gives us the real distribution of molecule. So, if I drop H plus in, into the system having amide, so that H plus will approach oxygen and not nitrogen. Based upon electronegativity, if you think, then based upon electronegativity, the lone pair of nitrogen is more tightly held than oxygen. So it was supposed, uh, sorry, lone pair of oxygen is more tightly held than nitrogen because oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. So in that case, H plus should have gone to nitrogen because nitrogen being less electronegative will offer its lone pair to H plus to a greater extent than oxygen. But uh, the thing is, it's, it's not electronegativity, it, it, it's a complete different thing. We are thinking the lone pair to be on nitrogen and then we are applying the concept of electronegativity. But the lone pair of nitrogen is not in the orbital of nitrogen. It is being pumped into the orbital of oxygen by the virtue of resonance. So what we were thinking is, what we were thinking was completely wrong. We were thinking that okay, nitrogen has a lone pair, oxygen also has two lone pair, the electronegativity of nitrogen is less, so the availability of lone pair to the external species from the nitrogen will be greater than oxygen. Now this, this was based on the premise that the lone pair stays on nitrogen and the lone pair stays on oxygen. But this premise uh, was a false premise because the lone pair of nitrogen does not remain on nitrogen. Rather, due to resonance, it is being pumped towards oxygen. This is what we have to learn. The thing is, resonance provides information about the real distribution of electron inside a molecule. So before applying any other concept, before applying electronegativity or inductive or hyperconjugation or field effect or effect of solvent, whatever. We have to think about resonance because resonance gives us the distribution of electronic wave inside the molecule. This is the most powerful factor, this is the most dominating factor, this is the most influential factor, this is the most dictating factor. It is the focal point of our thinking in organic. Whenever you start thinking in organic, you start thinking from resonance. That's what you have to learn and that's what you must be familiar with. Now, uh, uh, a similar kind of problem is presented here. Now, suppose I add S plus into the system containing this compound. I have two nitrogen. I have named it as N1 and N2. Both has one lone pair. If I ask you, S plus will approach this nitrogen, whether N1 or N2. Now, I'm giving you a, a, a solution and you just check whether I'm saying correct or I'm not saying it properly. Uh, now, see, uh, both are nitrogen, both have lone pair. The, the, the nitrogen which is less electronegative will offer its lone pair more to any other external species. So that nitrogen is supposed to be more basic. That means the external species will come to that nitrogen to gain a pair of electron. If we talk about hybridization, the hybridization of this nitrogen is sp3 because it is making three sigma bond, it is having one lone pair. So altogether it requires four hybridized orbital and we have seen this in the previous lecture. I have not been getting into this, but the hybridization of this nitrogen is sp3. 
If you look at the hybridization of this nitrogen, this nitrogen is making only two sigma bond. The other one is pi. It has one lone pair. Two sigma bond, one lone pair. Altogether, three hybridized orbital is required. So hybridization of this nitrogen is sp2. All right. Percentage S character. 33 percent. Percentage S character. 25 percent. Here, percentage S character greater. Electronegativity of this nitrogen will be greater. So N2 is more electronegative than N1. If it is more electronegative, it is supposed to hold its electron more tightly. And if it holds its electron more tightly, it will less offer its electron to any other external species. So it is supposed to be less basic. So if we add H+, plus, H+, plus is supposed to go to N1 rather than N2. If this is the real distribution of electrons in the molecule. Now, if I say K N2 is sp2 hybridized and one is sp3 hybridized, I'm totally correct. If I say N2 has 33% S character and one has 25% S character, I'm totally correct. If I say N2 is more electronegative than N1, I'm totally correct. But when I say K N2 is more basic than N1, there where my fault lies and there I'm erroneous. Now N2 is not more, not more uh, and, and when I say N1 is more electronegative, uh, uh, when, when, when I say N1 is more basic because N1 is less electronegative, there I am erroneous and there where I, I am wrong. N1, although it is less electronegative, but it is not more basic. Why it is not more basic? Because we are thinking that lone pair is on N1 and we are thinking K N1 is less electronegative. So N1 will offer its a lone pair more to any other external species. Now this thinking is a wrong thinking. Because the lone pair does not reside on in the orbital of nitrogen, the lone pair gets diffused into the orbital of N2. Because what happens is this bond is between carbon and nitrogen. Nitrogen is more electronegative and due to inductive effect, these electrons will be more shifted to N2. So N2 will have a del negative charge, this carbon will have a del positive charge. This carbon is adjacent to a nitrogen. A nitrogen's orbital is completely filled. Now here you have a partially filled orbital and here you have a partial positive charge. So what will happen is the electron of nitrogen will try to shift towards the orbital of this carbon because this carbon is somewhat electron deficient because due to inductive effect N2 has extracted some electron from both the bonds and made this carbon electron deficient. So this electron weak wave, this electronic wave will, wave will shift towards the orbital of carbon. If we carry out resonance, we will shift both the electron of this pi bond to N2. So N2 will develop a negative charge, this carbon will develop a pure positive charge and when we make a bond between this nitrogen and this carbon, for making a bond you require two electrons and those two electrons are available on nitrogen. So for the bond, those two electrons, both of them will be coming from nitrogen one of the electrons will jump from nitrogen to carbon, both will have one and one and they will result in overlap making a bond. So, if we draw the resonating structure, next resonating structure, this would look like this. This nitrogen will have plus charge because it has donated one electron to the carbon. And this nitrogen will have a minus charge because both the electrons of the pi bond get turned into the orbital of nitrogen and one out of those two electrons were from the external source. So it will have a minus one charge. It is neutral, but this RS is also neutral. Remember RS, in all the resonating structures, charge is conserved. If one of the RS is neutral, all of them has to be neutral. Now this is the thing. If we go for drawing the hybrid, Then see, this nitrogen is neutral, this nitrogen has plus 1 charge, so in the hybrid it will have the character of both, so neither it will be neutral nor it will have a plus 1 charge, it will be in between them. Here it is neutral, it, will have, it is having minus 1 charge, neither it will be neutral nor it will have a minus 1 charge, it will be something in between. Here it, there is a single bond, here you have a double bond, so here neither it will be a single bond nor a double bond, it will be something in between, here you have a double bond, here you have a single bond, so here neither you will have a double bond nor a single bond, something in between. This is how the hybrid will look like. And this is evidently clear that N1 has a plus charge, N2 has a minus charge. So even though N1 is less electronegative, N2 cannot be more basic because N2 does not have the lone pair in its orbital. That lone pair has entered into the orbital of N2. 
So to think that N1 has a lone pair and N1 is less electronegative so it will offer its electron to a greater extent to any other external species is a wrong thinking. N1 can only be more uh, basic uh, owing to be uh, because of being less electronegative when the distribution of electron is not there, when the electron stays into the inside the orbital of N1. But that is not the case here. The electron does not stay inside the orbital of N1, rather it shifts towards the orbital of N2. This is resonance and this is the application of resonance. This is the change that resonance brings about in the molecule. Apart from bringing stability, it also brings change in basic, acidic and various other nature of the molecule. So here if we see, if we talk about stability or if I do a kind of reaction, if I write S+, plus, then this S+, plus is supposed to go to N2 and not N1. So this, these are simple applications of resonance. Later on we'll see more rigorous application. And uh, just to have a quick, quick example, let's talk about acetic acid. And let's draw methanol. And if I ask you which is more state which is more acidic. Now acidic acids are those species which gives S plus. Now if this acidic acetic acid gives off S plus, it will form acetate ion. Just remove of S plus, it will result in formation of O minus. Here do the same remove H plus, you'll have methoxide ion. Now, the one with, uh, which, uh, which forms a more stable conjugate base, that will be more acidic. So, after removing H plus, whatever you are getting, if that is a stable intermediate, the tendency to form that stable intermediate will be greater. So, all I have to do is, I will, I will compare these two intermediates. If acetate ion is more stable, then this is more acidic. Because it will, if it is more stable, the tendency of its formation will be greater and more of S plus will be removed off to form acetate ion. If methoxide ion is more stable, then methanol is more acidic. Now to look for the stability here, there is no scope of resonance because there is no pi bond. I cannot shift this negative charge to any other atom. Here there is a scope of resonance because you have a pi bond adjacent to this negative charge. So what I do is, I shift this pi bond on oxygen. Now as we bring negative charge adjacent to positive charge, so we will bring positive charge adjacent to negative charge. So I have a negative charge on oxygen, all I have to do is bring a positive charge at this carbon. And positive charge can be brought on this carbon by breaking this pi bond. If I break this pi bond and bring both electron non the oxygen, then we'll have negative charge on, on oxygen and a pi bond will be formed between this C plus and O minus. So this is the another RF that is possible for this. So this acetate ion is having one more resonating structure, methoxide ion will have no resonating structure. So here, the negative charge on oxygen is shared by another oxygen. So if I draw the hybrid, then this negative charge will be shared by two atoms. So this oxygen will have minus half unit of charge, this will have minus half unit of charge. But in methoxide, you cannot have any sharing because there is no resonance possible because there is no other pi bond in methoxide. So whole of the negative unit, minus one unit of charge will be on same oxygen. There is no sharing. And there is a burden of carrying charge on this atom. So this oxygen is more unstable. Here there is less burden on oxygen for carrying the charge. Always remember neutral species are more stable. When you bring negative charge towards neutrality, it brings about stability. Less the charge, whether it is plus or minus, the stability will be more. If we are mitigating the charge density, potential energy of molecule decreases and that brings about stability. When you are decreasing the potential energy, stability is increasing. We have a possibility of spreading up the charge in acetate ion due to resonance which is not available in methoxide ion. So acetate ion due to resonance, due to spreading of the charge is more stable than methoxide ion. If this acetate ion is more stable then the corresponding acid is a stronger acid. So we see due to resonance, resonance increases acidic strength. Resonance increases the stability of conjugate base by spreading of the charge and in turn that increases the acidic strength. So these are some of the prime, uh, some of the application of resonance and these are very fundamental and basic applications. So here we complete the fundamental concept of resonance. This much you must be knowing before we go to the advanced version of resonance. So here we come to a stage where we complete the first landmark of organic chemistry. We understand resonance, we can do some simple application of resonance. 
After having learned this, we must feel confident and this must inculcate some sort of interest in organic chemistry. From here onwards, we'll move on to the next lecture. Till then, thank you very much. See you in the next lecture.